Hey there, community. Welcome to season three of the Providence podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At Godspace, we have all kinds of ways to connect with other people and to grow your spirituality. So be sure to sign up for our newsletter and stay connected with us. Visit godspacecommunity.com and follow us on social media too. Godspace is a ministry of the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, and you are more than welcome to stay connected with us as well. You can find us at cdpkentucky.org and wherever you find yourself on social media. And now let's get started with our scripture reading and do some reflecting together. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this Sunday's Gospel, Jesus boils down the whole law and prophets to just two commandments. So, I wonder if we can do that with all of the readings for this Sunday. Break them down, add some prayer, some life experience, and reduce them to their essence. It's like making jam. Cut up the fruit, add some sugar, and boil it down. It's a simple process, but as I've learned the hard way through mishaps and misadventures, like jam that's runny or too sweet or burned. Simple isn't necessarily easy, but here goes. In our first reading, the commandment from Exodus is to refrain from oppressing immigrants, widows, orphans, and people living with poverty. In the second reading, the community at Thessalonica is commended for imitating Christ and for becoming, quote, a model for all believers. And in the gospel, Jesus reduces all of the commandments to loving God with your whole heart, soul, and mind, and loving your neighbor as yourself. So, love God and other people, not only by not harming the vulnerable, but by imitating Christ, who loves everyone wholeheartedly. When I reduce it down this way, it seems kind of easy. In the face of heartbreak and hardship, and there's a lot of both of those going around these days, I can respond by standing at a distance and causing no harm. That's easy. Or I can try to help people, and direct service is a way to do that, although I personally don't always know what people really need. I can also advocate for people, be a voice for those who have no voice, except that every person does have a voice, and maybe my speaking over that voice, or even shouting, could drown out another person and their perspective. So, these may seem like ways to imitate Christ, do no harm, and love God and neighbor, but I also have to be careful. There's nothing wrong with service and advocacy, of course not. But if I think about it in a me versus them or helper versus recipient kind of way, that's a problematic dynamic. And scripture doesn't call me to that dichotomy. In fact, each reading redirects back to its audience 
and invites self-reflection. So why do we not oppress immigrants and refugees? Because, quote, you were once aliens yourselves. Why did the community at Thessalonica imitate Christ? Because it was modeled to them first. And how do we love our neighbors? By loving them as ourselves, by entering into mutual relationships rather than othering people. To other someone is to treat them as if they're different from me, or really to treat them as less than me. And Jesus doesn't other people. He enters into a relationship as one with them and calls me to do the same. If I really love my neighbors, I acknowledge our shared humanity and even appreciate our differences. The term neighbor implies a mutuality. It shows equity and not a power differential. It's not me versus them, but us together. And the ways in which we do or do not love others is intimately connected with how we love God. How can we say with a straight face that we love God with our whole selves if we don't treat people well? If that's true, if our love for God is bound up in how we love people, how do we justify violence in the name of God? How are there religious wars? Destroying people is clearly the opposite of loving them, and you'd think that would be an obvious obstacle to loving God. But it's not that simple, is it? Religions might come from God, but they're made up of people, and people tend to act out of our own brokenness or selfishness and ego. And sometimes we even do so in the name of God. I recently heard someone describe the conflict in Israel and Gaza as a war between two religions. But I just don't think it's what's happening. It's more complicated than that. I'm not going to venture into the politics of it all. I don't have the expertise to do that. However, there are spiritual implications, and those affect all of us. Last week, I heard an interview with a rabbi and an imam on NPR. It was on All Things Considered. One of them, I think it was the rabbi, said, This is not a conflict between Jews and Muslims. It's a conflict between people who think violence is the answer and those who believe there's another way. That really spoke to me. Neither Judaism nor Islam condones violence. In fact, both of them condemn it. And we Christians have no right to judge. How many times have we entered into war and violence in the name of God? And yet we know our scriptures promote peace, justice, and love of neighbor. In fact, all of our faith traditions call people to love rather than violence. And yet, Humans hurt each other. That's about us, not God. How do we help each other to love God with our whole selves? And how do we help each other to love our neighbors? I certainly don't have the answer to world peace. But I do believe that there's another way than violence to resolve conflicts. Also, as soon as we other people... As soon as we separate ourselves from another person or group, our empathy and compassion evaporate and conflicts emerge. I think that peace starts small, in my own heart, in my own relationships, and then extends from neighbor to neighbor and neighborhood to neighborhood and eventually, hopefully, nation to nation. We humans are a dang complicated bunch, aren't we? Each of us, each of us has the potential to inflict terrible hurt. But we're also capable of offering beautiful, wholehearted compassion. We try to choose to act out of the parts of us that are like God 
and avoid reacting out of the small, broken, selfish parts of ourselves that are not like God. And maybe now more than ever, we need to be in mutually caring relationships with our neighbors. Each tiny action that builds relationship goes a long way to break down barriers and resolve conflicts, or even stop conflicts before they ever happen. It's not easy, but the essence of God's call is simple. Imitate Christ by loving God and caring for our neighbors with our whole hearts because we are one with each other. Amen. So let's continue and maybe even deepen our reflection. Have you ever had an experience of connecting with someone who's a little different from you? Maybe someone in your neighborhood, someone in your local community, What was that like? How does getting to know other people deepen your awareness? Does it ever bring you closer to God? What's that like? And where is God in that for you? What does loving your neighbor as yourself look like in your life? How are you loving God with your whole heart, mind, and soul? What does that look like for you? And how is God present to you in your love for God? Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to stay connected with God's face and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you continue on your faith journey, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you, and may we all take good care of each other. Peace.